This is the 2012 Mini John Cooper Works Cooper Coupe. Now, well, that's a whole mouthful. If you already thought that the regular Cooper was a coupe, apparently, according to Mini, you're wrong because this is actually the Mini Coupe. And what they've done to create a coupe, aside from adding the sort of backwards baseball cap looking uh, air splitter here on top, as well as a trunk spoiler, is they've completely removed uh, the normal vertical hatchback Instead, installing this slanted hatchback with sort of a small faux trunk here at the end. Since this is the John Cooper Works Coupe, there of course have been some significant changes versus the regular coupe. Those include bigger brakes, bigger tires, uh, bigger wheels. We have some significant suspension upgrades. We have this optional red top with some uh, funky black and red stripes, these optional chrome mirror caps, and of course, some very significant changes under the hood and slight interior tweaks. So let's dive under the hood, let's dive inside and see what makes the John Cooper Works Mini Coupe so special. I didn't get that right either. It's the Mini John Cooper Works Cooper Coupe. There we go, that's right, let's get inside. Under the hood of the JCW Coupe, we have a 1.6 liter four-cylinder engine. This one's turbocharged and produces 208 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque. That's a significant difference over both the base Coupe as well as the Cooper S and the competition, which would be the Fiat 500 Abarth. Now, much like the Fiat 500 Abarth, to help reduce interior cabin noise, the turbo's actually here on the front of the engine with the intake back behind, and it's mated to a six-speed manual transmission. Let's talk about the interior and pricing. Now, the interior, for the most part, is definitely befitting of a $31,000 car. We have uh, you know, panel gaps that are very nice. Uh, we have this nice soft touch dash. The instruments are all very nicely done. Steering wheel is great to hold. Um, you know, the airbag cover even is quite nice. The seats are nicely done. We have these uh, interesting floor mats with piping here in the JCW model. Um, pricing is where it gets a little bit tricky because although the John Cooper works um, Cooper Coop, if I can get that right again, starts at $31,000. Our model's almost $39,000, and here's why. We pull out our handy window sticker here. You can see that our midnight black paint job, which, uh, you know, is a metallic paint, and this is actually fairly common with European cars. It's $500 extra for the metallic paint, so we'll give them that one. Leather's $1,500. This mini connected nav system, $1,750. The sport suspension, which basically replaces your springs with bricks near as we can tell, uh, is $500. The chrome line interior trim, that's this uh, nice interior trim right here, that's $250. Black headlight housings, $100. Red sport stripes on the outside, $250. Door caps and uh, mirror caps in chrome, $100. Uh, this center armrest here, which I think is essential, $250. Xenon headlights, $500. This up-level Harman Kardon sound system, $750. White turn signals, $100. And of course, a $700 destination charge, which again is fairly common on most vehicles, brings us to $38,450 as tested. Now, for those of you that are paying attention, that is about $13,000 more expensive than the Abarth we just had last week. And that was the Abarth as equipped for $25,000 as we had it. Honestly, for the price, I think I would probably take the Abarth and fix those little things that I didn't like about the Abarth. You know, the slightly less than comfortable seats and, uh, and the exhaust note, which really wasn't my cup of tea, but you might like. Coupes aren't really known for their cargo carrying capability, and of course the Mini Cooper Coupe is no different. This is the largest roller bag you can carry on a domestic flight. You can actually fit about two or three of them in here in the trunk or one average sized American journalist. Now there's also a ski pass through here should you for some reason decide you want to take your sporty Mini Cooper Coupe skiing with you. You could jam those in here, although judging by the length of the car and the distance from here to the shifter in there, I actually would have to think that uh, anything other than children's skis would probably interfere with your shifting on your trip. So don't drive very far if you're going to do that. Yeah, back here in the cargo area, there's also a nice 12 volt outlet, which is a nice touch. Not quite sure why I'd need that in a coupe again, because this plug is really close to the plug in there. And while I like 12 volt outlets in the back for camping, again, I don't really think I'd take my Cooper Coupe camping. Let's take a look at the Mini Connected system. This is both a navigation and infotainment system that's essentially just Mini's version of BMW's iDrive. Since, of course, Mini's owned by BMW, they just sort of borrowed a 
a uh, version of iDrive. It's an interesting combination of the latest version of iDrive uh, with a smaller screen uh, and, and a functionality set that's somewhere between an older version and the absolute current version of iDrive. <clears throat> we have our mini connected app here on my iPhone 4S. And uh, just like iDrive, you need this if you want to use mini apps like Twitter, Facebook, uh, the Google Send to Car, uh, as well as some of these more interesting mini specific things like Mission Control, Dynamic Music, and Driving Excitement, which we'll take a look at. So this is the home screen on the mini connected system. I'm going to go ahead and plug my iPhone in so that way it'll be ready when we look at those features. We have our uh, stereotypical CD multimedia interface here. This is just like iDrive. Uh, we have USB access to our iPhone or iPod. This is uh, allows you to search through playlists, genres, etc. You can browse your playlists as well. This is probably the faster way of interacting with your iPhone to be honest. Uh, much like BMW's iDrive, there's also a, a quote-unquote plug-in interface and that goes in the center console and that uh, charges your phone, docks it, and uh, gives it the ability to use your docked phone in there as well as another USB device. That's how you can use two devices in the system. <clears throat> Down here on radio, we have our typical radio and satellite radio, uh, very typical Bluetooth phone interface. Um, we were a little bit concerned about the audio quality on this system. It's not as high as some systems. We have BMW's usual navigation system. And while this does give you the ability to do 3D view as well as traffic, uh, it doesn't actually have uh, the 3D perspective view with topographic information like some of the modern BMW products have. Um, essentially, voice controls for entering addresses, etc. is exactly the same as iDrive. Fairly easy to use, fairly intuitive. Um, the office application just really allows you to see your contacts on your phone. Not really quite clear why that's separate. Um, if we scoot back up here to Mini Connected, this is where the interesting things really start happening with uh, Mini and with iDrive. So right here we have Driving Excitement. As you can see under Driving Excitement, we get our horsepower and torque gauge as well as an engine temperature gauge. It's actually kind of interesting. Rather than being integrated into the software on iDrive, this is actually running off of my iPhone. And so there is a decent amount of lag between throttle application and these gauges actually doing something because the car has to communicate that data to my iPhone, my iPhone has to generate the data and then send it back to the head unit. We go back to Mission Control. This is a very odd thing for Mini actually. Uh, what this does, and while it sounds more interesting than it might actually be for you, uh, what, what it does is it makes the car talk to you in cute little British voices. Um, apparently this is how Americans and Germans see the British people. And so if you floor the car, it will have a little British guy come on and say full throttle in a quasi-British uh, quasi accent. It sounds a little forced to me. Um, it will also occasionally spout out random mini facts, talk about the weather, etc. Um, there are multiple different uh, language packs that you can use there and you can download them from the Mini Connected app on your phone. Dynamic music is kind of interesting. Uh, this basically plays um, a digitized tune. Don't know if you can hear it here. Plays, plays digitized music um, from the iPhone through the center screen. However, there's a twist. Um, it actually has dynamic beat capability. So the faster you go, the faster the beat gets, and it adds extra instruments if you do things like turn on your turn signals and, and things like that. Um, more of a, uh, a uh, whiz-bang feature, I think, than an actual useful feature, to be perfectly honest. Um, vehicle info is where you get your trip computer as well as your vehicle stats. As you can see, driving this car fairly hard over the last um, 216 miles, we've averaged 26.6 miles per gallon, which actually is fairly good. Considering this has more power than the Abarth, I would have expected this number to be lower, and in reality it is. If you treat it gently, however, you can get 33 to 35 miles per gallon on the highway. And uh, in, in our initial uh, test driving home on my daily commute, 50 miles one way, I actually managed to average about 29 miles per gallon overall, which included highway driving, city driving, and mountain highway driving. Now on this windy mountain road, this JCW coupe just sticks to the road like glue. And that's thanks as much to the light curb weight as the fairly sticky 205 with tires, which are fairly wide for a car that's this light. 
The extra JCW power upgrades are also instantly noticeable on this road with just over 200 horsepower on tap. This vehicle is significantly faster than the Fiat 500 Abarth uh, since they both have uh, around the same curb weight. They're within a uh, hundred pounds or so of each other depending on the options you select and how heavy the driver is, etc. The weight difference is fairly negligible. And with 160 horsepower on tap in the Fiat and two, over 200 in this, you know, the difference is, is night and day really out on the road. This feels much more aggressive, uh, you know, as far as the throttle response. Unfortunately, the steering actually is better in the Abarth. It, it has a firmer feel, slightly more communicative uh, than the Mini. And this Mini steering wheel just isn't doing it for me actually out on the road. It's, uh, it's thinner than the Fiat 500. It's not flat bottomed, which, you know, is nice to have on a windy mountain road. It just doesn't have that same ultra sporty feel. However, just about everything else in the Mini is more luxurious than in the Fiat. You know, we have much nicer interior trappings. We have much nicer quality switch gear. Everything that your arm rests on is definitely uh, that notch, you know, nicer in this vehicle. Is that worth the $12,000 difference between the Fiat 500 Abarth that we just tested yesterday and the Mini Cooper, uh, or the, sorry, the Mini Coupe JCW that we're testing today? That I'm not quite sure. The exhaust note, however, in this car is also the same story. It's more luxurious, uh, it's definitely quieter, it's more muted. I actually think it sounds more refined than the Fiat 500 Abarth, although our Facebook fans tell us that the, uh, the 500 is definitely the way to go as far as the exhaust symphony goes. I would probably take this car, however. This JCW Coupe has the optional sport suspension, which includes stiffer springs, among other things. And that makes this uh, particular vehicle uh, a little bit less pleasant to drive on this broken pavement that we have here in Northern California. The rear end feels a little bit more unsettled, both than the regular JCW Coupe, as well as the Fiat 500 Abarth. So I would only select this particular option if you live in an area with perfect pavement. I'm not quite sure where that is, if you live there, then drop a comment in the section down below and I will move there. Again, I'm Alex Dykes and this has been our quick take at the 2012 Mini John Cooper Works Cooper Coupe. Check out thetruthaboutcars.com for news, reviews, and of course the full review on the 2012 Mini John Cooper Works Cooper Coupe coming up soon.